Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we're going to be taking a look at 11 hidden features inside of iOS 11, because it's fun to look at all the big features that Apple talks about on stage, but each year there's a lot that they don't talk about, and it's not really apparent the first time you look at iOS 11. So if you're excited for iOS 11, feel free to drop a like down below, and of course subscribe for more content like this in the future. But jumping into number one, we finally have the ability to customize Control Center. You can do this through the Settings app by tapping on Settings and then tapping on Control Center, and here you can add or subtract any toggles that your heart desires. It's really easy to do and it changes dynamically so you don't have to restart your phone or change anything else. Just swipe back up to access control center and all of your favorite toggles will be there. Now one toggle that is hidden in here bringing us to number two is screen recording. This is something that I personally have wanted to see on iOS for such a long time. As a video maker, the only way to do this before today was to plug your phone or iPad into your computer and record it through QuickTime or another third-party application. But with iOS 11, we have the ability to do this straight off of our own devices. And you can just tap on the toggle right here to start recording, and it's beautiful too. It's 60 frames per second as far as I can tell, and it just looks incredible. So super happy to see that change, but it's interesting that Apple made no mention of that on stage at WWDC 2017. Moving on to number three, we are gonna stay in Control Center. There is so much hidden inside of just this area. You can 3D touch on almost all of this to access stuff that you couldn't access with without 3D touch or by long pressing if you don't have a 3D touch enabled device. For example, you have the ability to enable or disable the microphone if you 3D touch on the record screen option and there's so many other small features hidden inside of here that you can access just by 3D touching on each of these different sections. There are so many small settings that you can tweak and change through here and I recommend trying it out for yourself. Moving on to number four, we need to head over to a typing area because there is a new one-handed keyboard option in iOS 11. This is gonna be incredibly useful for all you plus-sized iPhone users, anybody with an iPhone 6S Plus or an iPhone 7 Plus, or maybe the iPhone 7S Plus whenever that is released in the future. It doesn't really seem that useful on an iPhone 7 just because the screen isn't that big in the first place, but when you enable it just by holding down on the globe or emoji symbol, you can hit left or right to shift that keyboard over just a little bit to the left or to the right. Not a huge feature, but definitely handy if you're using a larger phone. Now moving on to number five, do not try this unless you actually want to call 911. I was testing it for this video and no joke, I thought you'd be able to stop the call after it went through, like before it actually pinged a cell tower, you could hang up. Um, you can't do that. And I actually got to talk to a 911 operator and explain my situation. And she was like, hey, just wanna make sure everything's okay. I'm like, yes, everything's okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. And not 10 minutes later, do two police officers show up at my door because I had to confirm my address. So what this does is alert the police. You do this and I believe it'll also send out a message to some of your most important contacts if you set that up under the emergency SOS settings. But don't mess around with this because the feature works and it contacts the authorities if you are in need of some dire help. Now out of this entire list, number six is my personal favorite. Hidden within the settings for the camera app is an option that when enabled allows you to scan QR codes without even touching the screen. I know you don't believe me, so let me just show you how it works. You literally can just look at a QR code, hold your iPhone running iOS 11 up there, or I'm sure it works on the iPad as well if you have it on iOS 11. It automatically scans the code and doesn't even launch Safari for you. So if you do it on accident, it's not going to be a big deal. You tap and it shoots you over to the website or the URL that that code was pointing to. I cannot tell you how often I'm gonna use this. I always had to download a third-party app just to scan QR codes, but with this feature in iOS 11, that's not necessary anymore. For number seven, we're gonna go ahead and launch up the Maps application, and in here, you can just double tap now with a finger and zoom in and out. Once again, this is definitely a feature aimed at people with larger screen phones. If you're rocking the iPhone SE, it's probably not going to be the most useful feature out there. But even if you are using an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 7 Plus size model, you can just double tap with a finger and zoom in and out. Or if you're driving, I guess, if you have one hand on your phone, which you probably shouldn't be doing in the first place, but hypothetically, if you did, it would be easier to zoom in and out now. At number eight, we're going to return to our control center settings, but this time on our 9.7 inch iPad Pro. And iOS 11, we have the ability to enable the flash on the back. Why this wasn't an option in the first place, 
I don't know. Like, I feel like in some of Apple's promo materials, they showed people camping with iPads or using them in a place where maybe an iPad shouldn't be. But now you can use the flashlight in iOS 11. Just head over to your control center settings, make sure you have the flashlight toggle enabled, and it works just like the normal flashlight on the iPhone does. Number nine is type to Siri, and this is gonna be under your accessibility settings. So to access this one, head over to settings, general accessibility, and then scrolling down just a wee bit, until you see Siri. The very first option on this screen will say type to Siri. I didn't know what this was, but when you enable it and go ahead and try to use Siri, you don't actually have to speak with her anymore. All of your queries will be entered uh, via your two fingers via typing things. So it's gonna be pretty useful if you're in a situation where you can't use Siri, or obviously this is an accessibility setting, so individuals who cannot speak back to Siri can still submit their queries this way, which I think is awesome. Moving on to number 10, we have a crazy new feature for everybody who wants to save some space on their iPhone. If you tap on settings and general, and then going down to where it says iPhone or iPad storage, Tap on any of the apps that you have a lot of data through. If you tap on offload right here, and this is super cool, you can actually delete the application, but save all the data. So maybe you're going on a trip where you wanna take a lot of photos, but an app like maybe a game has a ton of data, like gigabytes of data on your phone. Hitting offload will delete the app, but your actual game save data and all your other personal data associated with that app won't be deleted and they'll stay on your phone. And if that's not useful for saving iPhone space, I don't know what is. I think it's a brilliant feature and I know I will need it or would need it if I didn't have the 128 gigabyte iPhone. Especially if you have a smaller iPhone, guarantee you're gonna love that feature. And at number 11 in the Photos application, when you've taken a live photo, you've got some new options to modify it. Go ahead and swipe down right here and you'll notice you have three new options. You can either loop it or add a bounce effect or add this really weird exposure look. I don't really get the whole point of the exposure. I think if you took the photo correctly and didn't just take a joke photo like I did, it would look a lot better. But you can loop your photos now or add this bounce effect to make them look a little bit different instead of having to go ahead and force touch or 3D touch just to animate that photo every time. But you can always go back to a live photo if you change your mind, you can just tap back right there and you will be good to go. That's gonna wrap up the 11 hidden features in iOS 11. But if you discover anything else, feel free to leave a comment down below or share this video with someone else if you found it useful. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like down below and of course subscribe for more on iOS 11 in the future. I've been Sam, I hope all of you are doing great and I'll talk to you later.